Greetings and welcome back! Today I'll be playing some video games and once again, it's racing games. Why racing games you might ask even though I stated many times now, I don't like them, nor is any good at them. Well watch part 1 for a description and let's get started. As always, we'll go from old to new starting with Gran Turismo PS1. Oh no... Look, I know this is the big AAA game of the racing genre, but that doesn't mean that us who knows nothing about cars can even comprehend what they are talking about. Well, let's pop it in and take a look. And once again, I'll use my PS3 because I can. As soon as we start the game, we get introduced to what I would call impressive intro for the time being, just like the third game. Although, unlike the third game, the first one is lacking something. Noticed it? There's no cars in this theme! There we go, about one minute in the intro and finally we get to see the cars. I mean, that's a lot of non-car going on. Just like the third game, this one has a lot of menus. We have quick arcade, replay, theater options and of course the Gran Turismo mode. Which we'll be taking a look at. Oh my, this is almost as bad as those updates on PS4. Oh, who am I kidding? Nothing is as bad as that. Well, about 30 seconds later, we are in the game and... Oh dear. What the hell, man? This one has even more options than the third one? I mean, come on, I couldn't even figure out half the stuff in the third one, and now you're telling me the first one has even more options? Well... Fuck that! This game doesn't like me! Okay, upon a closer look you quickly see that all the options is just car brand, so instead of the car dealer in Gran Turismo 3, the first one has all these different locations. And to be honest, I'm glad to see that this means they actually improve their games for the better. So let's go for the master once again. Upon entering the store you see that some things are more complex. Now we have 4 choices, new, used, speed and special model. Actually, it did simplify some stuff in the new installments. Well, that's just great! Then maybe in Gran Turismo 25 I can figure them out! This time we only have 10,000 CR, which I'm still not sure what is, but this means we can only purchase a used car to begin with. And really, what is the difference between a new and a used car? I know what the difference is in real life, but really, this is a video game. Does it really matter that the previous owner hopped the leather fin? I mean, it's a fucking video game. You really can't see or feel it for that matter. To make it easy on ourselves, let's look at time trials. You know, I can't believe I said that. I hate timers in video games. They are just annoying. Well, like any other racing game on the PS1 and the PS2, you press X to drive and the D-pad to steer. Or, if you're playing on the PS3, you can use the analog. But sometimes, that makes it more difficult. Okay, that was time trial, now let's try out GT League. And you might notice that the Sunday Cup makes it debut in the first one. I mean, what? They couldn't even make some new courses, they really had to reuse them? Don't you dare! Mario Kart has some incredibly creative stages. Well, let's just try it out, okay? What the fuck? I need another license? What the hell, man? I'm not even qualified to enter the first race? Hey, sorry kiddo, you're not qualified to enter this race. Now go get your bike and take a trip. What the fuck? Okay, let's try special event. Okay, enough of this. I thought the third game was being complicated, but this is just being an ass. Alright, next game, another one for the PS1 called Monster Racer. You know, it's almost Halloween, and yeah, this is sort of an Angry Ween special. I'm sorry about that. As soon as we put the game in, we're introduced to the intro sequence, where they are showcasing all of the different playable characters and stages, I guess. I mean, it's one of those better than the actual game scenario. You know, when they put so much effort into it, you almost swear that all of the budget went there, but let's start up the game. Just like any other PS1 game, the loading is too long. 
Okay, finally, we now have a lot of menus, adventure, arcade, time trial, password, options and credits. Again with the credits! Who cares? Let's try out adventure. And now we're introduced to a lot of different characters which all is upon on some horror related matter except wolf. Which I guess is just a wolf. We got a lot to choose from, a skeleton, Frankenstein's monster, a mummy, a witch, a vampire, wolf, a scarecrow which looks so much more menacing in the intro I might add. And the Yeti, which I'm not sure belongs here. A sexy French ghost maid, which sort of reminds me of Lara Croft. I don't know why though. And a knight. Wait, hold on a minute. Holy shit, that's a knight. Fuck the rest of the characters, I'm thinking with the knight. Okay, time to start the race. The first stage is the botanic garden. If you've seen the little pitch up of horrors or Godzilla vs. Biolante, or any episode of Batman involving Poison Ivy, you realize that this is a good first stage. You press X to move forward like any other racing game and circle to use items. Yeah, this game got power-ups, very similar to Mario Kart. By the first race, you'll begin to notice that the game is actually extremely easy. After like 20 seconds of racing, there's no enemies to see. Where the fuck are you guys? And even once when I played it, I made a whole lab around every single player. Can you believe it? Usually, I complain about these racing games being too difficult, but this is the other way around. It's way too damn easy. Okay, Botanic Garden complete. Now on to the port. Again, pirates and undead pirates, not a bad theme. And by now, you realize that the music is ass. It's just the same few Techno Beast loop. Yeah, Techno in a monster game, I know. Anyway, not much to say about the stage other than I noticed that the vehicles, can you even call them that? I mean, the skeleton is just floating. Well, they bounce off the walls like bumper cars. Bumper cars! Whee! <laughs> well, that sure was fun. Now on to the mad jungle. As in... Jungle hunt? Again, not bad for a monster theme game. I have to admit, the stage is sort of fitting after the Mad Jungle, it's yet another classic, Egypt. E. Well, I guess Egypt was copyrighted. Before I tell about the other stages, I have to say that here, the game just got cruel. Here I was, hovering on my shield when suddenly... Damn! I was nowhere close that hole, you mean, if just a single pixel touches, I'm done? That's bullshit! Okay, the next stage is Castle, which has even more pitfalls than Egypt. E. Damn! 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 After the castle, we got the museum, which is a stretch. I mean, it looks nothing like a museum. After that is the mine, and now it's the iceberg. Personally, I think this is the odd one out, but I guess it sort of fits? Well, after the iceberg is done, we got the Death pass. What? They weren't allowed to use the word death? Or maybe it was a typo? Who knows? After Tiff pass is complete, we got to the volcano, a boss stage. Sort of like the Crash Racing games, you have to beat an insane difficult boss in order to unlock them. Or not, you really couldn't do that in Crash, am I right? Well, never mind, this boss pushes the difficulty up a few notches. And now you have to concentrate a lot in order to beat him. Oh yeah, it doesn't help that there's those unforgiving pitfalls either. I might also mention that there's a downgrade you can get called Shambolic Switcheroo. Yeah, it basically means you get reverse controls for a short period of time. Which sucks with the Shambolic Switcheroo, the tornadoes and the fucking pitfalls combined. This is hell. <laughs> Finally done, and now I expect a great reward. Maybe, I don't know, the goblin guy as a character, maybe? Or some new stages? Okay, that it doesn't really need. I mean, it already got a lot. What? It repeats? Oh, don't tell me it's Ghost and Goblins bullshit. I already had enough of this. I don't want to do it again. Fuck that shit. While not completely terrible in any way, it suffers from something worse. It's a watered-down version of Mario Kart. 
To be exact, it's just dull and boring and really doesn't have a lot to offer. The races are repetitive, not that creative. I mean, don't get me wrong, the stages look awesome for PS1 and they have a lot of variety. It's just, they start to become unappealing at the fourth lap. If they kept it at three laps, I guess they would have been better. Anyway, on to the next game. Let's move on to Motorstorm, yeah, PS3 and Total Carnage. I remember this game being extremely entertaining with a couple of friends sitting on a couch, racing against each other, crashing into everything and... <coughs> what? <coughs> it's single player? No, it's not, it's... Oh dear. It's single player. And only online multiplayer. Then what the hell did I play with my friends then? Yeah, I actually remember playing this with my friends, but I guess I'm wrong since that's impossible. Maybe we took turns or something, I don't know. Well, let's put the game in and start it up. We agreed it to the most realistic graphics I've ever seen. Get it? Because it's actual footage from a desert. Anyway, the trailer starts out with greeting us to the new age of warriors. A new breed of warrior has been born. Apparently they use cars for some reason. And we see all the insane things happening in this valley, while some not so fitting music plays. I know some people may like this type of music, but it's really not my style. The main menu is really simple. It has play, online, extras and setup. I mean, what more do you need? Okay, the stage select screen is next. By now, I'm actually reminiscing Rad Race on the NES. Why you just put in the game and you were ready to race? What happened to video games? Now you even need to put in your birth certificate. Okay, maybe not yet, but believe me, it's coming. After we select race, we can choose a vehicle type. Now that's not that ordinary. You can race as a racing car, a motorbike, ATV and a speed buggy. Hell yeah, let's choose that! So there's a total of two buggies you can choose from. A Beelze buggy Carabet. Funny. And a Wombat Typhoon. I'm assuming that's not real car names. And pick the Wombat. Now what color hot pink or red and black? Well, the last one mentioned is obviously my color, so let's pick that one. One thing everybody who was early adapters of the PS3 quickly realized, the load screens are even longer than the PS1 games. And that always bothered me. How come a new console, new engine and better games always took longer to load? It makes no sense to me. It's almost as bad as Sim Ants. Okay, not that bad. The race starts and we see that it is truly free for all, everybody against everybody, whatever vehicle you choose. I feel sorry for the bikers. <laughs> well, I'm off to a flying start. Like many PS3 games, you speed with the R2 button, not the X button like previous consoles. I have to admit... It was kind of revolutionary when they did this, I mean, it almost felt like you used the actual speed pedal. Well, almost. And like many other racing games, you can get first person view by pressing triangle. And we all know I'm an excellent driver, so all we need to do now is sit back and watch me ace this race. Fuck! 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 Why? This game is tough. Really tough. Unlike the regular racing games, this one is only two laps, one less than, say, Mario Kart. Which, in my opinion, is great, and I'm sure there's an Iron Man challenge somewhere in the game. Come on, second lap, second place, come on, come on! Third place? Okay, I'll have to admit, it's tough. Really difficult and challenging, but in all honesty, I did place third, which in my case is pretty damn good. Okay, next race, let's pick a truck this time. Alright, let's go. Oh, 
awesome, yeah! You know when I played GTA 400? This is what I wanted in that game. Not what we got! I just realized I haven't even talked about the crashing yet. It's what makes the game. Getting others to crash, crashing yourself, and sit for about 10 to 15 seconds and enjoy the havoc. I have to admit the racing truck is almost like hard mode. Hard to maneuver, slow starter, and given the fact that I'm terrible at this, this is really difficult. Yep, I knew it would end like this. Okay, let's try one more vehicle, the rally car. Now hold on a minute. A rundown police car? Hell yeah! Let's get right into it! I was on a mission from God. Anyway, I found the rally car rather easy to maneuver, especially compared to the truck, and I got yet another third place. The game isn't terrible by any means, if anything it's really fun to play alongside friends if your friends can agree to take turns. Apart from this, I would say, if you are new to racing games or are just bad like me, find another game to play, it's really unforgiving toward non-racing players. So that was Racing Games Part 2, a part of Angry Green, I hope you had a great time like I did. And remember, I'm the Angry Nader Tony, bad video games for your entertainment.